I don't remember. I used to. Perhaps I'm stupid. What's your name? I'm three or three. I don't know. I don't know. How many kids do I have? Let me think. My kids. I may not have kids. My money is missing. Every penny is stolen. I'm serious. I'm afraid they're putting poison in my food. These are a group of elderly people with Alzheimer's disease in the private care home in the mountainous hinterland of southwest China. Given their age, people respectfully call them Ye Ye and Nai Nai or grandmas and grandpas. Together with their families and caregivers, they struggle to manage a way to cope with the disease and combat the deterioration of their condition. Once they move here, it means they've entered the final phase of their lives. Alzheimer's disease is the fifth biggest cause of death in China. Only 2% of them are taken care of by professional care institutions. China has a quarter of the world's Alzheimer's patients. With the country's growing population growing unprecedentedly, the number of patients will likely increase fourfold by 2050. Meet the patients, their families, and caregivers, and discover the anxiety, struggle, and misconceptions behind one of the biggest problems of an aging society in our radio documentary, Aging in China, Living with Alzheimer's. Within the four-hour flight from Beijing, Guiyang is the provincial capital of Guizhou. It's a city not often seen in China's news headlines. In the eyes of local people, it's a less developed third-tier city compared to metropolises like Beijing and Shanghai. Yet against the background of a rapidly aging society, the task that Guiyang is facing with an ever-increasing grain population is just as challenging, if not greater. An estimated 800,000 people aged above 60 live here, including many diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Located in the leafy south of the city, Fushun Kang Care Home is one of few institutions in Guiyang to specialize in supporting elderly Alzheimer's patients. More than 30 seniors with the disease live on its third floor with the support of caregivers. Huang Sihai is the founder of the care home. The care home was not designed to focus on elderly Alzheimer's patients. But over time, we've found that these people are commonly misunderstood. Their family members' overwhelming feelings of loss and pain is beyond many people's understanding. We realize that this elderly group deserve our utmost concern. I freak out over many things she does. It's so embarrassing to mention that. Everything went wrong. I totally burned out. It's not realistic to take care of her at home. I couldn't go to work. She can get extremely anxious and calls me dozens of times every day. She went missing twice. Police brought her back. We were so worried. This disease is devastating. They start to swear at people and get suspicious for no reason. And in some cases, aggressive. Life becomes very painful. Twenty-six-year-old Li Yulian is headness of the care home. She feels the pain each family suffers. One grandma once shouted at her daughter for not coming to visit her enough. The fact was that she had brought her chicken soup only the day before. 
But the grandma had totally forgotten that. Her daughter broke down in my arms and asked me whether she was truly a bad daughter. I only visited her yesterday. She cried in pain. It's like you hit a brick wall. All the love you give them is bounced back. Family and friends can take care of Alzheimer's patients in the early stages, but as the disease advances, they get increasingly frustrated and emotionally painful. Alzheimer's is a slowly progressive brain disease and the most common cause of dementia. In its early stages, symptoms are subtle and mild and can be overlooked for years before mental decline worsens. Huang Sihe says there's no effective cure for the disease. It erodes the memory steadily, causing confusion about time and places, delusion, and prompting many other devastating behaviors. Eventually, the patient won't even recognize their loved ones. <laughs> 79-year-old Xin Ping An is one of the Alzheimer's patients at the care home. She worked at a local factory until she retired. Xin now has a delusion that she's still working at that factory. This is our factory. Look at these people. They're just sitting there doing nothing. Uh, from here, I can go outside. My son works over there. Huang Pei Kang, Xing's son, says their mother's personality has changed a lot. My mom was a very tidy and organized woman when she was young. But since she got the disease, she has refused to bathe. She's a totally different person. Xing's daughter, Huang Pei Wen, retired early and had taken care of her mother for seven years before she was sent to the care home. In summer, she would layer herself up with a thick sweater. In winter, she would wear just a light shirt. And it always happens when you are in the middle of something. She stormed about, smashed things at home, and swore at us. I called my brother and said I was completely helpless and exhausted. Grandma Xin is already in the moderate to late stages of Alzheimer's. You can see she's disoriented and confused about places. But bringing the elderly like Xin Ping An to care facilities is not an easy thing. Family members are torn emotionally because they know their loved ones may never come back home when they are sent there. I feel guilty to send my mom here. My mother-in-law asked me to bring her back, so does my husband. The neighbors gossip. I'm not willing to part with mom, but my sisters insist on sending her here. If I can afford a stay-at-home caregiver to look after mom, why do I still send her to a nursing home? Others may think that I leave mom here because it saves me the trouble. It hurts when you think about it. None of the elderly here is an early stage Alzheimer's patient. The family don't think there's the need to bring them here during that stage. The elderly people themselves also are not willing to live in a care home. But once they move here, it means they've entered the final phase of their lives. Many people think they are just like children. But if you teach a child, you expect progress. In these elderly people, you see progression in the opposite direction, day by day. 
It's sad and frustrating to see the decline in them. Chew your food slowly, Grandpa. Let go, Grandma, let go. Let me help with putting on your clothes. Would you like a candy? Let go. Ouch, Grandma, please, don't hit me. Assisting the elderly to perform basic tasks every day is overwhelming. <laughs> Li Zhengxiu is one of the care staff. Helping the elderly get up and putting them to bed are the most challenging tasks. That's also the busiest time of the day. Get up, sweetie. Good morning. Let's get dressed. No, normally she wouldn't get angry in the morning. Grandma Tang would. Sometimes she would hit us when we try to help her to get up. <laughs> From assisting the elderly to get up and dressed, toileting and eating and to bathe, there are endless tasks to juggle. In the role of caregivers and nurses, the ordinary daily routine also includes helping the seniors with their medication and taking their blood pressure and monitoring their blood sugar levels. We have all had training like how to help them turn over in bed, feed them, and change diapers. Every two hours, we would let them drink water and help them go to the washroom. This lady is Xu Yuan She likes us to call her Wai Po. She's a typical Alzheimer's patient. Her memory of newly learned information lasts for about 30 seconds. Ninety-year-old Wai Po, meaning maternal grandmother in Chinese, was one of the first Alzheimer's patients at the care home. Wu Dajun is her son. She used to get up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and would knock around and shout at us to get up and go to work. Ren Yin, the youngest worker at the care home, cannot help but laugh when she tells the anecdote about Wai Po. <laughs> Wai Po typically mistakes others' rooms for hers. Once she went to the wrong room and slept in a grandpa's bed, Grandpa had to sit by his bed watching her sleep. At last, he decided that he couldn't wait anymore and came to us for help. Wai Po's son says all her life she has cared a lot for others. She kindly gives comfort to Grandpa Wu when she wanders in the corridor and finds him in a state of distress. Did you cry in the night? Don't cry. Be brave. Cheer up and join us to play. Take it easy. Let's play together, okay? Tears rolled down Grandpa Wu's face. Wai Po is the sweetheart of the third floor. Everybody loves her. She's also a singing star and amazingly remembers the lyrics of many old songs. When she's in good mood, she leads the elderly to join her in singing. Love and affection are essential to help the elderly Alzheimer's patients along the way. Close attachment, too, is what Huang Sihai deems a foundation to help slow down their mental decline.
Even for late-stage Alzheimer's patients, a friendly environment will soothe them and help build trust. They may not remember specific things, but they know they can be off guard in such an environment. Huang talks to Wang Zhengdi, an 81-year-old lady in the final stage of Alzheimer's. She only speaks in a mumble. She has trouble speaking now. We need to talk more often. Follow me and say, I can find my room. I can find my room. I can find my room. This is unavoidable. The only thing you can do to fight against the decline is to train them to speak repeatedly, over and over again. You need a lot of patience. Then we may have a chance of delaying the progression. We have a specialized team to provide brain training courses to help them. In this game, the elderly need to accomplish their tasks in three steps. Clap their hands, knock on the table, and turn over the cups in front of them. It's an easy game, but for the Alzheimer's patients, memorizing the moves and their particular order is a mountain to climb. It's these simple activities that help them reduce the speed of brain function decline. From 6.30 in the morning till 7 in the evening, the entire third floor of the care home is in a bustle and commotion. These are the occasions when the elderly socialize, which Huang Sihai says is also key to combat the disease. Many of the care home staff here had worked in hospitals or as stay-at-home caregivers. But looking after the elderly with Alzheimer's is a very different experience. They share their complicated, mixed feelings. They're like kids. You cheer them up if you keep them company and coax them. Sometimes she bites us or pinches us so hard that we cry. They are clear-headed and calm in one minute and confused and irritated in the next. When they get aggressive and leave cuts and scrapes on us, we simply apply some medicine to the wounds. The job is highly stressful when they relieve themselves with their clothes on and smear feces on walls and everywhere. Sometimes they are very agreeable and understanding. We lean on their shoulders to rest for a moment when we're exhausted, as if they were our grandparents. That feels so warm. I think the job is really fulfilling. I played mahjong all the time in the past, when I stayed at home. Here the work is indeed a bit stressful, but I feel my life is meaningful. Fifty-five-year-old Li Yichun has worked here for three years. Honestly, this is not easy stuff. Many people give it a try but soon left. Probably only one out of ten caregivers would stay eventually. All the elderly people here were bedridden when they were infected with COVID-19 last winter. I cried and was so worried, not sure if they could make it this time. It was an extremely difficult time. 
the elderly, the staff, everyone was infected. Nobody was allowed to visit according to the quarantine policy, including family members. We held video meetings every night to communicate and keep moving. During the day, I rushed to buy medicine and medical equipment. We stayed in touch with their families, who also provided great support and uh, resources. And finally, we came through. Ren Ying is a therapist at the care home. We had to stop both physical exercise and brain training when the pandemic swept through. When everything returned to normal a month later, we found many of their conditions had worsened. Now we are clawing it back little by little after picking up the physical therapy. Exercise and training have made a big difference, like in the case of Grandma Tong Gui Lan. In the late stages of Alzheimer's, the confused 90-year-old Tong Gui Lan enthusiastically offers her matchmaking service to visitors she comes across at the care home. But when she first came here three years ago, she was on the point of death. Grandma Tong was tube-fed and almost unconscious when she arrived. She had developed both urinary and bowel incontinence. Now she can walk and talk and eat by herself. She has the strength to hit us. Once when I tried to help her go to bed, and she kicked me off the bed, we laughed to tears. We are so happy for her. We want to hit the break through training and exercise to slow down Alzheimer's progression. How sad it is if by the time when a person lives in this world, their entire life's memories erased and they cannot recognize any of their loved ones. We hope what we're doing can at least keep some memory of the faces of their loved ones and the beautiful moments in their life. That's why we believe this is worth fighting for. According to the last national census in 2021, the number of people aged 65 and older had exceeded 190 million in China, accounting for 13.5 percent of the total population. Sun Yong'an, an expert with Alzheimer's disease China, says approximately 10 million people in the country are affected by the disease, making up a quarter of the world's total Alzheimer's patients. That number is expected to reach 40 million by 2050. On average, 4.6% of people aged 65 and older in China have Alzheimer's disease. As the percentage increases with age, one-third of the people older than 85 and half of those older than 90 have it. Alzheimer's disease is the fifth biggest cause of death in China. Huang Sihai says anyone can get Alzheimer's. Once you get it, it's irreversible. The disease progresses slowly over many years until the damage to brain function leads to death. Nevertheless, the disease is 40% controllable. If people are better informed and educated about it and 
work hard to find sensible solutions to fight to delay onset and the progression, the quality of many patients' lives would be improved. It also helps ease the pain and burden on their struggling families. However, the number of elderly patients who are sent to nursing facilities in China is very limited. Only an estimated 2% of them are taken care of by professional caring institutions. Huang Pei Kang, Grandma Xing Ping An's son, believes the majority of the elderly with Alzheimer's in Guiyang stay at home. A family's financial situation is an important factor. Mm. Better off families hire 24-hour caregivers. Our own financial situation is around the average, so we send mom to the care home. Poorer families have no other way out but to lock their old folks at home. Their symptoms deteriorate very quickly in these cases. Poor awareness of the disease is another reason why many elderly patients stay at home and fail to seek professional help. The term Alzheimer's is unknown to many people in China, and many of those who have heard about it cannot even work out the strange, transliterated foreign name in full. Li Yulian, the head nurse, studied nursing at school before she joined Fushun Kang Care Home. I had no idea what Alzheimer's disease was before I came to work here. Sun Yong An from Alzheimer's Disease China points out that misconceptions about Alzheimer's disease is very common. Many people believe it's in the best interest of the patients to be protected and are kept at home, not allowing them to do anything, including going out. In fact, this brings great harm to their health. Zhang Liangfen from Guizhou Alzheimer's Disease Association adds that even many hospital staff's knowledge about the disease is very limited. They usually tell their patients that it's the normal sign of aging and there's no cure for it. They don't actually know that something can be done to prevent it from progressing too fast. Sun Yuan says China has put forward an action plan to help people be better prepared for the disease. The target is to reduce the risk of Alzheimer's among people over 65 years old by 2030 and increase both levels of awareness and screening. It's a comparatively easier task in the cities, but an uphill battle in remote rural areas. Typically for many Chinese people, there's still another reason behind their reluctance to send their loved ones to professional care providers. They hold strongly to the traditional mentality that it's the duty of the children to look after their aging parents. In most cases, the elderly Alzheimer's patients are sent to nursing facilities only when the family starts to lose control of the situation. We don't know much about nursing homes in the countryside. Everyone believes that sending an aging parent to a care home is unloving and irresponsible, and something to be ashamed of. I hope I enjoy good health as long as possible and die quickly when it's my time. I'll try my best to avoid going into a nursing institution. No, nobody goes to care homes. Elderly villagers are still being looked after by their children. I think improvement in people's mindset is in direct proportion to the region's economic progress. In this regard, people locally say Guiyang lags five years behind metropolises like Beijing and Shanghai, while rural areas in the province lag five years behind Guiyang. <laughs> Thank you.
The day ends for the elderly as twilight approaches, but it's far from over for the caregivers. Putting all the elderly to bed takes hours. Some of them simply stay up and wander up and down the corridor the whole night. Let me take your shoes off, Grandma. Don't cover your mouth with the comforter, Grandpa, or you will have trouble breathing. My foot hurts. It's cramping. Let me give you a massage. Is it better? Switch off the light. Good night, Waipo. See you tomorrow. After the seniors go to bed, work starts for those on the night shift. Xiao Jinghua and Liu Xingfu take their turns to work at night. We start to do walk rounds at 8 p.m. and check everyone every two hours. We must be careful not to let our cell phones shine in their eyes. Normally we check if the comforter comes off or if anyone throws up or wears the bed and help to clean up in case that happens. We change diapers for some of them and help others who need to use the toilet. We call doctors or dial 120 and inform family members in case of emergency. We check their breathing patterns too. Some of them might pass away during their sleep. Gong Min, head of the nursing department at the care home, had worked in a hospital ICU for 10 years before she came to work at the care home. It's my responsibility to discuss with family members when the elderly person approaches the end of their life. But they prefer to send their loved one to a hospital ICU? Some families agree when they send their loved ones here that they stay with them at the care home when they're dying. In many cases, the elderly breathe their last while sleeping. They came to this world intact. We help them depart this life intact and with dignity. Their families always express their gratitude for what we do. Li Yulian recalls the night when she looked after a grandpa till his last breath. I had been taking care of him since he came here. On my night shift that day, I noticed that he was a bit uneasy. So I went to check on him every 10 minutes. Then his time came. I held his hand and kept telling him, Hold on, Grandpa, hold on. Your daughter is on the way. Please wait. His daughter arrived. Grandpa took a last look at her and passed away. He was still holding my hand. I burst into tears. I cried so hard that night. I got puffy eyes the next morning. When my colleagues asked me what happened, I said, my grandpa just passed away. I attended grandpa's funeral and called out to him to bid farewell. Huang Sihai says people in the countryside do not have the kind of medical services they have in the cities. Any sign of Alzheimer's can easily be missed. Villagers wouldn't take their folks to see a doctor even if they did show any initial symptoms. Moreover, a lot of people have never heard about Alzheimer's. 
it's very likely that those affected by the disease and their families do not even have a clue that their loved ones suffered from Alzheimer's during the painful long goodbye. That was Aging in China, Living with Alzheimer's, a CGT and radio documentary dedicated to the 30th World Alzheimer's Day. Our special thanks goes to the seniors and their families who shared their stories, as well as Huang Sehai and his team for their support in making the documentary possible. Until next time, goodbye.